Oops, sorry. <laughs> I pressed one. So welcome everyone. So my name is Ariadna. I'm working in, as data scientist and a machine learning engineer at NatWest. Today I'm going to talk about the enterprise scale MLOps uh, that we have built uh, during the last two years. So, but before starting uh, diving into the technical aspects, so I'm going to give you an overview of NatWest. So we are the largest commercial and business bank in the UK. We bank one in every four businesses. Uh, the range is between the startups and multinational companies. We are about 60K members, uh, staff members around the world. And we have ab about 3,000 models between development and production. Uh, we have around 500 data scientists and data engineers, and we're still growing. That is just to give you an idea of the people working in the data and machine learning area in the bank. But now, starting with uh, the technical aspects, what is MLOps? So MLOps is a culture and a set of practices, or good practices, that allows us to design, to develop, deploy, and maintain our uh, machine learning solutions. And it's based on the DevOps good practices. We are in a continuous integration and continuous development of our um, machine learning solutions that includes also open source tools and open source libraries. So for us, it's important to build a reliable, reliable robust, and scalable products for our customers. So what is a real machine learning solution? So the first thing you start thinking of is in the machine learning code. So this piece starts when the data scientists meet with the stakeholders, and they start uh, chatting what is this, uh, the problems they have, and the stakeholders say, like, give the requirements. Then the data scientists, they go to gather some data, um, get some insights from this data, and they start running some experiments and trying different algorithms. Um, after that, if they get uh, the final solutions, or sometimes they have different models, they go back to the business and they present uh, this one. And then they, the stakeholders need to decide um, if they're going to sign off the, the solution. But many times, this solution doesn't see the like light into production. Why? Because a lot of this uh, has been coded in Jupyter Notebooks, and sometimes the, 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 um, the code is not scalable. It doesn't have unit testing. Sometimes the data that was used for training is different from the one from production areas, so you have to run regression tests and some other situation that uh, is going on about the code. So the machine learning code is just a small piece of all these big puzzles of uh, different pieces interacting with each other, like from data collection, feature extraction, all the way through the serving infrastructure and monitoring. For example, if you were having a large language model, you will need a certain part of the, infra of the serving infrastructure that will be uh, coded in a way that is serving correctly. And then you will have a monitoring system that ensures that the model is um, performing as expected and ensure that we comply with, the, uh, with our uh, regulators and our customers. So before starting uh, our like, MLOps uh, into, in NatWest MLOps journey, we were already having ma machine learning uh, models in, in production, but we faced different challenges. Some of them is like we were having different environments on-prem on, on different AWS systems. And in, the, in those systems, people were training and operating the models in different fashion. So sometimes also the, uh, the um, the cooperation or in, in working together or the teams trying to work in one uh, area and another make difficult this collaboration. So the people uh, needed like some work to, to a standard way to operate and to collaborate. But also the process uh, to handle the artifacts and code from one development system uh, into a um, development account into the production account was done manually. and that was taking, therefore, more time for the governance process to get everything approved. So your solution was taking longer to see the light into production and you, and, get, and you get the benefits. The other bit is the data wasn't centralized. So a lot of people, of the data scientists, data engineers, needed to, um, to request a lot of accesses, and it was uh, taking long time. And the technology was fragmented in those all of these environments and outdated sometimes. So we faced different challenges and we wanted to have less risk. So we start thinking about modernize our tech stack. Uh, so we uh, have like standardized um, 
platform, uh, in this case, AWS platform. We simplified the data access. We were having just a centralized data lake. And we optimized the governance process so we have a linear but robust process at the same time. And we standardized uh, the patterns uh, for development and productionization. So that give, give us fast time to value. So this is an MLS maturity cure where we are going to see uh, um, where we started and different metrics that were defined by the business just to track this transformation. And at the end uh, of the talk, I'm going to come back to this bit. Uh, but one of the, uh, of the metrics is the, uh, how was the delivery of an end-to-end -end solution from data discovery to productionization? It was 12 months. And also the data discovery was taking like five days uh, instead of one day or oh, less time. Um, the road to life was taking three to six months because we were having the, uh, each of these uh, environments were really bespoke environments. And it was also taking time for the governance process to, to approve them. And also the, the teams to start a project was taking too long uh, just to uh, get access to an environment uh, like 30 days. So they were not having a self service process. And as I mentioned, we were different in many ways of so, uh, executing patterns of, this, um, of these models. So as I said at the beginning, this big puzzle, it, this is like the, the translation of our puzzle for a scalable route to life and to be more uh, delivered uh, faster uh, solutions to the business. So that, as I mentioned before, we have an AWS account. Uh, in this uh, AWS platform. And um, this one has an AWS account, uh, share account, and as the name said, it's, sh it's sharing infrastructure with another um, machine learning uh, or use case accounts. It has uh, a product so, uh, called AWS Service Catalog. For those that don't know what is a service catalog, it's, um, a ta um, it's a service that package infrastructure and components. And it's like an online shop where you go, for example, in the online website, you pick up some products you choose, your teachers, and then you check out and they will be delivered to your home. And you don't care how the, you choose or how the dye of, you, of the painting of you choose was uh, device. You just care about the end product. So the same here, the service catalog, the platform engineering team, they are devising all the infrastructure products. And this, um, the use case uh, account just will get the final product and they don't care about how it was biased. So when a use case come, they will get um, to require like environments to, to start project, they will get three different environments. The development account, the, tech, uh, the test account, and the production account. In the development account, the data scientists, data engineers will start working uh, in the project, uh, in their workflow. And when they are happy with the, the final uh, workflow they fi finalize, they will uh, go to trigger a, a product in the service catalog that is a model production, um, model promotion, um, product that will uh, trigger a CACD pipeline that will move all the artifacts and code into the test account. As, as the name says, the test account is, is going to test all this um, code um, that was produced. And as in the same, uh, it's a mirror of the production account. So you want to test everything as if you were in a production uh, situation. And then if everything is fine, or if in case you have an error, you can go back to the development uh, account, trigger again the CACD pipeline. If everything works uh, well in the test account, then uh, there is just one approver to, to, uh, to do, and it's going to trigger again the CACD pipeline to move all the artifacts and uh, code to, into the production account. And in this way, you will have a fast time, uh, fast wait, or, a or you give to the business a fast uh, machine learning solution that is already robust uh, for being in productionization. So now I just gave you like the big, big picture of how it works in our platform, but I'm going now into more detail. As I said, we have, um, we ha we have an AWS account, uh, sorry, AWS platform, and in the heart of this is going to be used the SageMaker SDK open source, but it no, it's not just a tool, it's also um, gives you like, it's going to interact uh, the API with the infrastructure. So that makes you to have a SageMaker architecture in your platform. Uh, so in this, we will have three different uh, IAM roles or personas that will have certain permissions to interact with the platform. I'm going to talk more uh, in detail on, on them. 
but I will just mention which uh, they are. One is the technical lead and the model approver, usually it's taken by the data science lead. Uh, and then we have uh, the developer role. And in here, the technical lead will go with the platform engineering team, and they will uh, request the three uh, environments I talked before. And then the platform, platform engineering team will use the Terraform uh, infrastructure as, as, as code uh, open source tool. And then it's going to deploy once into the share account. When it sits in the share account, it's going to take about two hours to be deployed uh, all the three environments. And uh, then the technical lead is one of the most important perso personas here because it's going to provisionize all the, uh, the products. And one is the SageMaker domain, and then the SageMaker uh, user, uh, SageMaker studios for each of the users. Uh, it's going to enable the team to start working in the development. Um, after that, we have the data scientists and data engineers that will have the developer role. And they, in, in our uh, system, we have SageMaker project templates. Like, they are like MLOps uh, inference and training pipelines ready for people to start coding. And we develop the, this in-house. Uh, they will have all the standards that we require. And in, within he, this, we will use uh, open source tools. And I will mention a little bit about which ones we, uh, we use there. Uh, um, in, when the data scientists um, start um, uh, create a, one of these projects, it's going to deploy, or they're going to have access to um, to the notebooks, uh, to all the pipelines. A lot of uh, they're going to have the bit buckets, and this will be connected with the end, uh, the data lake. So when they, as mentioned before, when they finish their their uh, workflow development, uh, the model approver will be the persona that will go to the uh, model registry, where they will have all the versions of all the uh, models they train, and they will pick up those ones that they want to take into the next uh, um, area that is the test area. So the technical uh, one is to approve those uh, those models. The technical lead will launch uh, the model promotion uh, product from the service catalog, and then is going to move the pipelines, the inference pipeline and other artifacts. And the inference pipeline can be a batch job or an endpoint. The batch job is a scheduled job, and the endpoint is like URI, where you provide just some data, and it's going to reply with the inference. So as mentioned before, it's going to be test. Uh, everything will be test in the in the test account uh, triggered by the CACD pipeline. We trigger when, if everything's fine to the production account, and then you will have everything to production. But we also want to manage the risk of what the people is accessing this platform. We want that the people get the right access at the right time. Um, we have, therefore, like the I am roles policies. And when we set up these roles, we follow uh, the, uh, the principle of less privileges. And I'm going to start with the right-hand uh, side. For, for me, for you, the left-hand side, the platform support engineering. So they will have just uh, reading access. Uh, they will check or monitoring uh, what is going on with the pipelines. They can access uh, to all the logs. And if something is wrong, they're going to ask uh, to tell the data scientists and some engineers just to fix uh, the problems. And then the next role is a platform fixed engineer role. It will have uh, elevated permissions. And we are really careful we, we, uh, who we grant this access, because they can change things in the platforms. Um, they need to have a real good reason to use it. And um, it's time bounded. We uh, give like two or three days for everything to be fixed. And, and after that, they won't have access anymore. And then the three uh, I already mentioned before, the technical lead. So the technical lead will just, uh, is one of the most important uh, ones because it's going to enable the whole team. And it's going to use the service catalog used to provision everything that the team needs in that account and to promote the models into the next environments. The developer role is the data scientist and data engineer. They can write code and they can execute the SageMaker uh, pipelines. And then the model approver just has view access for the list and just to approve. But everything uh, I just talked so far is about how the platform is used. And now I'm going to go a little bit more deeper into like, how a data scientist and data engineer will interact with this platform. So as I mentioned before, we have this um, SageMaker uh, or MLOps uh, templates that we develop in-house. And the only thing they have to do is to access through the SageMaker uh, Studio, uh, the platform. 
when that uh, when you create this, it's not just a code base that is uh, already into this template. It's going to trigger the uh, the creation of infrastructure, and that is going to be three uh, S3 buckets for model uh, artifacts and for data. Also, they will create an AWS uh, CI/CD pipeline. In the CI/CD pipeline, we have some uh, steps for unit testing where we use um, PyTest um, black formatting. Um, um, also like uh, struct logs that are open source uh, tools uh, or, or libraries uh, that we help us, uh, to, uh, to ensure that, uh, that all the standards we require are in line with uh, our productionization. Um, uh, everything works well in the production area. Um, then other thing that happens, this code base is going to be copied into a tem uh, this template to a Git repository. In our case now, we are using Bitbucket. But I think in the middle of this month, we're going to migrate to GitLab. It's been a long process, but uh, at some point, we're going to use the runners uh, uh, just to check uh, as well to have the CI-CD pipeline, just to check unit testing and the uh, standards for the code and all the libraries we can use there, like I mentioned, the black formatting and all the uh, all these uh, bits. Um, so when that uh, finished, uh, everything will be deployed, and then the uh, data scientists will have access, like in ten minutes, to all the um, the SageMaker Studio, to the code and the pipelines. But now I'm going to give you like a, like a feeling of what it's been working. It's a demo. It's not exactly our platform, but it's more or less how it, we work on interact. Well, so you are in your SageMaker account. Uh, well, in the Amazon AWS account, you go to the Amazon SageMaker. In our case, the, uh, the engineers, um, the, the platform engineers, we already take care, we have access to the templates. Here we have the SageMaker domain where we have different uh, users, and they, they can launch from here uh, the studio. Once they add, you access the studio, uh, you can access to the resources. Within the resources, you will find the projects. And there you can find the way to create your project. If you are here, in our case, we don't have access to the internet, but these are the SageMaker templates that are uh, comes in AWS, uh, and we have the, they have different type of templates, and some of them they give like an end-to-end -end solution from building, training, and deployment, uh, but some of them will have just uh, one uh, just a template for training and one for deployment, for example. And also in the studio, we have one part that is uh, the organization. Ah, sorry. Also, we have we use, uh, as I mentioned, Bitbucket, but uh, we can have options to use other repositories like Git, uh, GitHub or GitLab. Um, then we have in the organization templates. We have different templates. Some of them use uh, Spark or by Spark Jobs, and uh, that is also an open source tool. And we have also um, uh, some based. Uh, some of them based in XGBoost, uh, just to mention some of these templates. So in this demo, we're going to use the end-to-end -end solution. And once you click uh, or select that one, you can access and use uh, put the name of this uh, project. In this case, is they use the code, uh, um, the Git version of AWS, the code commits. So you don't just have to access the name of your project. And in the background, all the infrastructure is being created, all the S3 buckets, all the uh, CCD pipelines, and all the code base is going to be copied into the repository. Uh, it's going to take like 10 minutes. In this case, as I say, they are using code commit. So they have access, uh, a quick access to in uh, as a link to it. In our case, we have to clone through the terminal, and in this we have two repositories: one for the deployment and one for the training process. Um, it's going to if we click in the in the clone repo uh, link. It's going to show uh, a little bit like just the co it's going to copy it really easy to to the to the instance of the studio all the all the code. In our case, we have like as well like different folders, and it's going to easy for the people to to recognize where is everything when they move from project to project. You can have access here to the pipeline that was uh, when it finished to deploy. It, it was running, uh, starting running the pipeline and executing the training pipeline. In this case, we have a pipeline. We have the processing step, the training step, and uh, the evaluation step, and we have a conditional step 
and then the register step. Um, it's going to take a while for this pipeline to, to finalize. And as I mentioned, all the code that corresponds to each of these steps is going to be present in, in one of these folders, for example, the pipelines uh, in the pipeline folder. And then you can access to one of these. And you will see that the evaluation step uh, uh, code is there and the uh, preprocessing. Pre and the pipeline, this is just a code I'm, I, where you define what is the sequence of all the steps. Uh, in this, I'm not going too much into details. But it's just going to be like a main part where you are defining the pipeline. And then it's, uh, you have other. Um, Order for this, where you have the source of each of these, uh, the source code of each of these steps. Here, we, all the pipeline finished to run, and you always can just take one of these uh, steps, and you will see the uh, all the metadata, the input data, the output like the metrics, the artifacts that we're creating, the logs. You can actually cloud wash, and I say we use a stroke log just to uh, structure our loggers for, uh, for visualizing in CloudWash. Then we have the parameters that you use uh, for running the pipeline, the different instance type, the different uh, cores. The, and, and then another thing we can use, because it's enabled by default, is the experimental trials. The experiments, you will create an experiment for each pipeline you create, and trials for each run. Uh, of this pipeline. When you have the, uh, the pipeline, uh, you can access one of these, for example, and you will have access to more metadata that will give you more information about that specific run. For example, you can see the metrics of that run, the parameters that you were using, and the different artifacts uh, that were created in the S3 bucket. Um, after that, you if we go back to this graph, and I say we have the last step is the register uh, step. So when you register or you run this, it's going to go to the model registry, where you will have all the list of all these um, models or version of models. You can go uh, to the model groups. And in the model groups, you will find uh, like the, the pipeline that was run, and then all the all the versions. In this case, we just uh, run once this pipeline. And you will see that the status of, of this uh, run uh, is saying say pending. So if we want to change this, with the, as with the model approver uh, role, you just go to, uh, to the lab here. To you see the metrics. If you're happy the metrics was as you're expecting, you just go and update the status. And you're going to approve, uh, approve it for the deployment. When you uh, click here, all the artifacts, all the CICD pipeline, I told you that uh, for the model production, uh, model promotion, it will be triggered, and everything will uh, will move to the uh, to this, all the artifacts, and it's going to take uh, uh, some minutes uh, to be created. So in this case, uh, we call the staging area the test area. So it says nine. Uh, it is in staging. You can see that everything. Uh, the status is that the model was approved in the in this area, and now the in this case it's an endpoint, not a batch job, and the endpoint is in service. So imagine that everything was okay in this test area or staging area, and then you go to the to, to code pipeline, and in the code pipeline, you go to the CACD pipeline that will uh, promote the model into production. So the, the technical lead is the one that comes and has uh, the permission just to approve it. And once you approve, it's going to trigger every, uh, everything to be moved into this area. And finally, it's going to take as well a while to be created. So this is just to give you a flavor of what of what process we are following now, how the, the data scientists, data engineers will go through. And also, there's another bit that we also take care about. Uh, as we mentioned, like we have other tools that we use in our workstep. Like One is like uh, Comet for the experiment, uh, experiment and tracking, because for us, it's important, like it's easier for the data scientists and data engineers that we can, uh, especially for the data scientists, just an easy way to see all the metadata. And this comet has a, an UI uh, that is easy for them just to, to, um, to pick up which are the best models. So you use the API of Comet just to put it in your pipelines. And that will facilitate that bit of, of that uh, of the 
discovery process for the data scientists. Once you are advanced in your development process and you pick up the best models, you can use the other uh, tool that is Trera for the explainability and bias detection. For us, it's really important to comply with the, our regulator and also with our customers to ensure that the models to understand what the models are deciding, what are the decisions they are taking, and just to com also to comply uh, and explain to the regulator, as I mentioned. And then the last bit is Arthur. Arthur is going to be in the production area for uh, mo uh, model monitoring. So as I'm, all these tools are going to follow our methodology. Um, and from the dis uh, discovery part, as I mentioned, Comet, that is going to be a little bit in the alpha version when you just publish which uh, models you're going to use. On using Trera, just to debug a little bit about what it, to, to find out about explainability, remove some biases, and then to have Arthur when you have in the production on uh, everything in our AWS platform. So what we have delivered so far is a production-ready uh, machine learning uh, workflows uh, that we reduce the time to, uh, time to value uh, for our solutions. And we, we have a self-service uh, infrastructure so the teams can start working as fast as, uh, as they can when they have uh, a project. Also, we, as I say, we have the explainability and bias reporting so that will uh, enable us to be more transparent uh, with our customers and uh, our regulators. And we embedded different standards into our templates and our CACD pipelines. And that also helps the data scientists and data engineers to, to cooperate uh, together and also move from one um, project to another because we is really structured uh, our templates that even you are in a different project, you will not always know what are the machine learning pipelines uh, in this uh, folder to in another project from fraud detection to other project that is uh, about uh, generative uh, uh, or whatever they want. It's it's, it's like really diverse and flexible in that terms. And also we reduce the cost uh, and enable sustainability because before we were having a cluster architecture. So it was running 24-7, uh, this cluster. But with a SageMaker architecture, we have just these steps that we are running containers. And in these containers, as soon as you finish your job, just it's, uh, it's going to shut down. And it's going to reduce like 50% uh, of the running time that translates to 75% of less carbon dioxide. And it, uh, this goes in line with our pledge to reduce our impact in the, in the environment. So just the final slide in terms of this MLOS maturity curve. Now we are in uh, more uh, advanced in this state. And now the end-to-end -end solution will, instead of taking 12 months, is taking three, uh, three months or less than three months. And we simplify the data access or discovery to one day. Uh, we simplified our uh, um, route to life, and this is one of the metrics that was more impacted in instead of three to six months, two weeks. And we have, uh, we enabled the set of service of the, our teams, and it's, instead of 30 days, it's going to take uh, two hours with our service catalog and reduce the number of, of these executing patterns to less than five. So, Thank you for your attention. And if you want to go more into detail, you can go to our AWS uh, for blog series. And, uh, and also, I want just to show the technical team that started building our platform. Uh, uh, it's a cooperation between AWS and NatWest. And most of us, we are women. And we have two our DevOps. Uh, um, we are from di uh, diverse parts of the world. And the bank always uh, champions diversity. And thanks for your attention. <laughs>